Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. In this series of videos, we're gonna be talking about core concepts and strategies for the early childhood teacher certification exams. Use this video and other videos to help you on your teacher certification exam. Okay, so we're gonna start with a question involving early childhood development in theory. I want you to take a moment and, and read over number one. This is, this is uh, an example of objective one on this test for the multiple choice. And it's testing your awareness of core ideas and theories in early childhood development. Take a moment and read the question. It says, number one, which line on the table below correctly matches a major learning theory with the view of learning associated with the theory? Let me highlight that. It's, we're going to do some matching of a theory with the correct view of that theory. And we have A, B, C, D. We have major theories and theorists. I'm going to circle the theorists here. Skinner, Piaget, Bandura, Vygotsky. One of these are right. Now, each one of these theorists is connected to a major theory. Each one of these theories is a, a tier three idea tier three vocabulary word, which means you want to go back and you want to clarify what exactly was that theory or who exactly was that theorist. Make sure you're very confident on the theories as well as the theorist. So let's review some of these real quick. Let's start with Piaget first. We think of Piaget, hopefully you're going back and you remember, oh, he had those stages, the sensory motor stage, the pre-operational stage, the concrete operational stage, the formal operational stage. Okay, I, I kind of remember these. Well, that sensory motor stage, that's when our newborns and infants and toddlers are taking information through their senses. They're learning about their environment through their senses. There are five senses, touch, sound, taste, smell, sight. They're gathering important schema through their senses, through the sensory motor phase. And that's stimulating cognitive development. In this sensory motor stage, because you're going to go back and you're going to review it because it's a major thing, there are concepts, there's key Piaget terms that come up, like object permanence. That's the, that's the peekaboo game. And in the peekaboo game, we connect that to a whole series of things involving uh, advancements in memory for the, for the infant. This is on every early childhood exam. So very, very important idea. And it's always associated with the peekaboo game. So if you see a question involving... The peekaboo game, you can bet it has something to do with object permanence. Okay, each one of these stages is connected to different, different ways of learning. I'll just, I'll just sum each one of these up, uh, or at least the, the ones that you're going to have on your test up into uh, real quick ways of thinking about it. Like pre-operational, I'm going to write down play. And learning and growing through play, learning social skills and sharing and interacting with others in a risk-free environment through play. This is when we think of our preschool classrooms, we wanna make sure that it, we have an environment where students are able to learn and take in information through these hands-on experiences and these activities that are fun and these play-based games and activities help facilitate the learning of essential core content. In this pre-operational phase, we're looking at the tail end of a toddler. So toddlers from one to three, we're looking at those toddlers from from that middle to end of being a toddler, from two to threes. And our preschool age, our three to fours, our four to fives, kindergarten, five to six. The students learning through play to gather essential information. Okay, let's do concrete operational. I'm just gonna write down concrete. We think of our first and second graders, they're learning, but they're learning through concrete things. For example, I'm gonna draw a map. I know it's pretty bad. <laughs> okay, that's it's pretty bad. Okay, I know my, my map's pretty bad, okay? But this map here, it's a 2D representation of the United States, and it's also a very concrete way of organizing the states and cities. And we use concrete manipulas and things like maps and graphic organizers to help facilitate content learning in primary school. Now, if I were to give a map to a preschooler, a three-year-old, a three-year-old might eat the map or tear up the map or, or rip the map, map into shreds. But we're hoping with a first and second grader that the map becomes more of a tool to help facilitate the learning. Okay, let's just stop there, all right? 
Piaget, we got these major stages. You're gonna go and review each one. Each one, there's some core vocabulary, like for example, sensory motor, object permanence, and each one describes a different way in which children learn in that specific developmental area. And each one of them talks about how learning is occurring through interaction with the environment. And it's this interaction with the environment in each one of these stages that promotes cognitive development. There's Piaget. What about Vygotsky? How does learning happen through Vygotsky? Well, we have a lot of ideas here. We have the zone of proximal development. We have teacher scaffolding. We have interaction, or I'm gonna put down social interaction. So when we think about Vygotsky and we think about learning, learning is occurring through social interaction. It's still experienced through environment, but it's that piece of a guided other, supporting, helping, clarifying, assisting with the learning. So when you think Vygotsky, think learning through social interaction. What about B.F. Skinner? Well, we have this term operant conditioning. So when you go back and you think about this right here, you should be thinking about Skinner was a behaviorist. And Skinner talked about operant conditioning. And this was, this was that experiment where you ring the bell, and you ring the bell, the dog comes, and he gets a treat. He gets positive reinforcement. Or if a dog some, does something bad, he gets, he, gets, he gets yelled at, negative reinforcement. So we have this idea of positive and negative reinforcement, and we connect this to behavior. Now, these ideas of operant conditioning can be incorporated in the classroom if you want to positively reinforce a certain behavior. And we want to sort of avoid that negative reinforcement, but there's definitely some applications to positive reinforcement in the classroom. But when you think of Skinner, just as you thought Piaget was interacting with the environment, or Vygotsky, social interaction, zonal proximal development, you think of Skinner, think behavior, and positive negative reinforcement. Let's do Bandura. Bandera's work is on social learning theory. This has to do with how children learn and see themselves in the world based on their environment, what they're seeing around them in their environment. And whenever you have something on Bandura, the scenario always involves a couple of key words, modeling, imitation, and observation. So what this is saying here is that we, we build our understanding of the world by observing things in the world or imitating someone that we know in the world or modeling a specific behavior that we learned in the world to somebody else. And, and all these things incorporate and influence our thinking. For example, if we want to be an astronaut and we observe an astronaut that we can relate to, then we might start copying the behavior of that astronaut. What did they do? I, I know this person's an astronaut. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what they do because I relate to that person. And we're told that you can become an astronaut. Well, if we're told you can be an astronaut and we see people around us that are astronauts and we start copying their behavior because we see it and we're told it and we believe that we can become astronauts, guess what? You're going to become an astronaut. Or the flip side is this. If you don't see anyone that's an astronaut and you're told that you can't be an astronaut and you don't believe you can be an astronaut and you don't see it on TV, anyone that looks like an astronaut and you don't relate to anyone that's an astronaut, then chances are you won't become an astronaut. All right, so when you think of Bandura, think about learning through social observation, imitation, and modeling. All these ideas connected to just one question. Let's go back. It says A here, Skinner. And in this scenario right here, if you read it over, you would have seen that it has to do with uh, learning that occurs through stimulus of reinforcers or pause of a negative reinforcement. A is the correct one. A is referring to behaviorism and learning through positive and negative reinforcements in the environment. If you look at this one right here, it has to do with learning, but learning that involves observations, imitation, modeling, well, this isn't Piaget, this is who? These are ideas connected to Bandura. So when you're going through these and understanding why A is right, make sure that you, you also study these other ones here too. Because the question could just as well have been Vygotsky social interaction or Piaget interacting with the environment. It doesn't matter, they're all important. Make sure you know them for that early childhood theory piece. Let's do another question. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. If you like this video, press the like button below or subscribe to our channel. 
This allows us to do more videos for teachers on their teacher certification exams. And if you need additional help, you can come and check out a Go Academy workshop or webinar or tutoring. You go to www.goacademy.com. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.